because it happened the other week, and I want to tell you. Um, so Sophie um, lost a bank card, and I had to ring up and pretend to be her. Um, <laughs> I'll set the scene. Right, okay. So, um, she was out. She was out on the piss, and as soon as I know Sophie's, you know, you go, I'm going out on the drink. I go, no, she goes, I'll be back by 10. I went, fucking way I, of course you will. <laughs> yeah, I'll go in the spare room, because I'm not dealing with this shit, right? <laughs> All right, comes back, she wants to put the lamp on so she can read a book for five seconds and then pass out, right? Fuck that. So I'm just like, right, you do what you need to do, I'm in the spare room. So I'm in the spare room, she wakes us up about ten past two in the morning. Carl! Carl! Carl, you fucking dick! <laughs> yes, dear? <laughs> need you to pay for the taxi. What? <laughs> Fucking taxi, you don't have me card, no way my card is you pay for the taxi, man, you twat. <laughs> <sighs> okay, it's a pleasure to see you as well, Sophie. So Sophie goes in the room, I'll go downstairs in my slippers to talk to a taxi driver, so I have to, thankfully I had cash, so I'll give him a Sophie jacket, bag, and phone spread out on the back seat. <laughs> I just looked at the driver, I was like, was she hard work? He just went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I take all that for her, you know, she, uh, by the way, I, I mean, she, she didn't do, she's not like a monster. She just, you know, you go out, you get wrecked, you're not the person you normally are. So, you know, I, I don't want to feel like I'm misrepresenting here, but uh, she was fucking hard work on this thing. And so I've got all of her stuff and I'm going, Sophie, she's in bed. And I went, Sophie. Do you know what she normally does? Um, she, it's really dangerous. She runs a bath because you're like, I'm, I'm cold. <laughs> I'm fucking freezing in here. <laughs> we'll just put the heat on. <laughs> Fills a bath, reads a Kindle, falls asleep, fucks the Kindle. <laughs> She's went through four Kindles. <laughs> I don't know how she hasn't electrocuted herself. <laughs> yeah, just see her in the back. Kindle floating. So I have to... <laughs> it's not normal, is it? <laughs> this is my therapy. So I have to, <laughs> so I have to take the plug out and I just let it just, and then she's just there like a fucking like a wet alien, <laughs> and I just throw a load of towels on her so she doesn't get hypothermia, and that's her bed for the night. Because I'm a fuck taking her from the bath to the. I'm not doing that again. Fuck that. So that's so. I'm going. So she's in bed. I'm going. Sophie. I've got all your stuff. Where's your bank card? Where's your goddamn motherfucking bank card? Where is it? Sophie, where is your bank card? This is the reply I got. I'm in the taxi. <laughs> where's the bank card? I am in the taxi. Right, Sophie, you're not, you're in bed. Yeah, I'm in bed in the taxi. <laughs> going once, going twice. <laughs> all right, cancelling the card. This is where Sophie's impression comes in handy. So I rang up, I went, hot. I went, <coughs> Hi, I'm, I'm calling to cancel a bank card that I've lost tonight. Oh, I'm very sorry to hear that. Uh, so I had to go through all the security questions. Got it cancelled. And then I went, I, I, uh, could I reorder one? And she went, yeah, but I'm going to have to um, answer, um, ask some security questions. And it was potluck. <laughs> the question was, and I can't believe that this worked. It was like one in a million. Well, actually one in four. She went, um, what's the last thing that you've purchased on your card? And just pulled it out of the arse went, it's probably a Kindle. <laughs> <laughs> the card will be with you within three to five minutes. <laughs> And even if, and, and apparently, oh, that was the best thing. Um, apparently, a card wasn't lost. I made it, found it, but she, I go on. Uh, but I made, I'm sorry. But I, I made it, found it. But what happened was, um, she WhatsApped her, but she doesn't have WhatsApp because that fucking Apple ID doesn't work because she gave the phone to her mom one time and it's homogenized into some super fucked Apple ID, like the fly. And, and even if she could get WhatsApp, she can't read it because the screen's cracked. 
Because even though I said, will you get a fucking phone cover, she went, I will, man. And then she dropped it, and I laughed, and I'm the arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it to hell. But she, um, I made it came around the other day, and I think this is a really tired expression as well. Um, what happened? I was like, I was in the middle, I was cooking the dinner, um, you know, uh, chicken, because, you know, you don't want to be fussy. <laughs> <laughs> Mark said, I'm just, I'm just trying to have a nice night. Well, will you fuck off, Colin? <laughs> <laughs> uh, chicken, um, I'm doing the dishwasher, and I was like, I had the hoover going, because I was doing like a triple threat, right? And I made came around, I went, hey, Steph, sorry, I can't talk to you at the minute, I'm doing three things at once. And I don't think this is a very appropriate thing to say in 2020, right? Or any, but especially now. She looked at me, looked at my wife, and went, hey, you got him well trained, haven't you? <laughs> Somebody said, yes, yeah. so, oh, yeah, that's a good one, that. I'll tell you why I don't like that, because... It's gender specific. There is no way any bloke could ever get away with saying that. Could you imagine? Can you imagine? You say, you all right, man? How are you doing? Where's the wife? The kitchen. Good. <laughs> in hell on, wouldn't it? Jazz got as well trained, though. I have to go in there. Picked up a fake tan from the post office. I hear when you, you, when you, the fake tan fits through the letterbox, but the packaging comes with it, does not. It's infuriating. But I hate going to that post office, I really do. I don't think I've ever had a good experience. Welcome back. I don't think I've ever had a good experience with, with the post office. I, when I lived in, uh, when this used to be um, a local gig for me, I, I lived in uh, Manchester in Rushholm for um, four years. And uh, one clap, that was, that was, I said Rushholm and someone just went. <laughs> Which is, yeah, we've heard of that. That's all it warrants. Uh, but I lived there and, um, I was teaching at the time, teaching maths. <laughs> All the best for them kids, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and um, what happened was, I got the little thing through the door. Now I sent off for my driving license. Now when you send off for a driving license, you need um, like a valid form of ID. Now the only form of ID I had was a passport. So I sent off my passport to get me driving license. So my driving license and passport came back, but I wasn't in. And then I've got a form saying, please bring your ID to the post office. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure the fine people at the post office will be more than understanding for this. <laughs> so I went, hi, um, if you had to pick this parcel up there, we just, uh, I don't have my ID because, uh, you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need your ID. Oh yeah, no, I've, I've just explained that all of my ID is currently in your possession. And I, I can't show you it because you have it. <laughs> well, you need your ID. I need it, yes. Um, you, you've got everything I've got, you've got. So, what do you want to do? <laughs> A fucking bright spark, isn't he? The manager. A fucking grown man wearing a short sleeved office shirt. Is it possible for a man to look any sillier than a short sleeved office just walking around? Ah, fucking pen. Cuts off there. Is it possible for a man. How do you want to look? Like me mum's dressed us and I'm eight years old. And he keys outside and he's like, hi, what seems to be the problem here? Oh, and hi, I'm just here to uh, pick up me uh, parcel, uh, me, me ID. Well, you're going to need your ID. I went, no, we've done this. <laughs> your colleagues got all up to speed. Is that how far you think we got? Really? You think I said, hi, I'm here to pick this up. And then your colleague shot himself <laughs> and just went, manager! <laughs> Listen, can't do it because you've got it. Any chance you could open it up and then and look at it and validate that it's me and then you can pass it through? Oh, I can't do that. Can't do that. Why? I, I don't know. <laughs> something like something we can't do. I went, is there any chance you can just open it and show, no, we can't do that, because what if that other person, what if it, what if it's not you? That's what he said, what if it's not you? He said, then don't give me it. <laughs> do you think I need or want someone else's ID? That's not going to get us far at all. It's photo ID. Well, we can't do what, what if he turns up? I went, well, you won't be able to give it to him either because he won't have his fucking ID, will he? 
<laughs> Eventually, I persuaded them, passed it through, opened it up, validated it was me, I had to sign some daft form, and I was like, great, well that took some dude, it was in there for about 20 minutes, and I don't know why, I don't know why he felt the need to say this, but he just went, next time bring some ID. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what, I shouldn't have replied, I shouldn't have responded, but I did, I couldn't help myself, right? I'm, I'm walking out, and I don't know who I thought of, I must have thought I was Liam Neeson or something there. I turned around and I just went, it was such a shit thing to see, it's really cringe, and I turned around and just went, I'll remember this. <laughs> Like, I took, like, it's horrible thinking back, but I hate all that, I hate all that bloody, like, yeah, it's cool. I'm amongst friends now, I can, I mean, it's after nine o'clock, I can have a nice time now. So I, um, I hate all that policy stuff, though, you know, you can't, oh, I'll just pause it, you know, I'll <laughs> Do you know what, I, I'm aware I do a lot of, like, stupid faces throughout the show. Um, You've just got us thinking about something else. I was in Edinburgh um, doing doing a show. And I, I did like, but I had a blind guy um, in the front, and um, his his friend was like every time I was doing a face, like was interpreting the face. So it really killed the momentum of the gig. Because if just if you need anything just to kill like roll and laugh at it, it's just some guy just going excited face, <laughs> surprised face. And at that point when I was like, <laughs> like, nobody was like, nobody was saying anything. And I just heard the guy just go, he's just doing another thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I was in Edinburgh, when we went and got the bath upgrade, sweet, fucking all you can eat, looking at other people getting ready, that. Um, I'd left me swimming shorts in the gym because I was there in Edinburgh six weeks previous as well. And so I thought I'll go uh, pop into the gym and I'll see if they've still got me shorts. And I was like, hi, I was here. What I do, I, do you know when you, you go swimming and you put the shorts in the, in the dryer and you hold it? So I literally put them in there, held them down for 10 seconds, stood, no clothes on, held it down for 10 seconds and went, okay, yeah, everything seems to be in order there, I guess. And just left me shorts in there. So I go, I, um, I was here six weeks ago, I wonder if you've uh, still got them. And he pulls out the lost and found box and looks at them and went there. Uh, and the only thing in the box my shorts. Not explaining that one. And, um, and he looked at the shorts and he looked at me and he just went, what do they look like? <laughs> Is this what you think I do? <laughs> do you think I travel up and down the UK selling sandpaper? <laughs> couldn't resist, couldn't resist. That's the last time I pro Do you think I pop up and down the UK going into gyms on the off chance that I can hoodwink you out of a pair of second-hand swimming shorts, really? Is that... What... It's not a career, is it, babe? I'm not going to pay the bill. What do they look like? Blue. Oh, well, then your story checks out. Ha ha! Don't even swim, sucker! <laughs> eBay! Oh, yeah, someone else is short. Yeah, get them on. Oh, oh hey, hope they've got X, man. Yeah. <laughs> Disgusting face. <laughs> Just go to the bathroom. I just saw someone come down. I thought somebody was going to fucking knock us out. <laughs> the amount of swimming shorts that I've lost, and you're taking the piss. Because oh, I can only see the first row, and then it's darkness, so I just thought, I was like, fucking hell, right, okay, I'll crack on. Um, <laughs> call me, don't care, just, just, just go home. Sunday, we've got babysitters, fucking hell. Yeah. I do, I hate, I hate saying, like, List adverts is the is the big thing that I don't like at the minute. You know, every every advert now has to be a big list, a big list of words. It has to be like yeah, you know, they're like poetry. But it's not poetry, it's just a list of words. But well, people think it's poetry and therefore they think it's good. It's not it's shit. It's always like a it's always like a mystical like it's a hill and it's like smoke and then there's just like a guy just like listing a load of words. Nonsensical words. And you find out what the advert is at the end. Or the, the go a little fastest. 
the steel of the longest, the backwards, the forwards, the afterwards, the during, the now, the winter, the spring, the summer, the evening, the snow, the daytime, the nighttime, your time, my time, his time, her time, their time, our time, your time, her family time. Bread. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's a good ad with that. Should we, should we buy that bread now? Because that, that's what we got told to do. Yeah. You know, we get, and yet, and because people think list adverts are acceptable, people start talking to you in fucking backward ways as well. I hate people who rhyme. I don't like people who rhyme. Do you know what I mean? Like, you get, I get like, me aunties like the rhyme. Do you know what I, mean? I hate having, I hate having a house party. I hate people coming to me house. Yeah, I hear people come to my house. <laughs> I do because what it's right. It's not acceptable. You have to have like a big bowl of crisps in your house. Don't you? <laughs> Somebody comes around, oh, here's a bowl of crisps. <laughs> but you can't go. Can I just check your service history on when the last time you washed your hands, please, before <laughs> we all get coronavirus? <laughs> Is that possible at all? If it was up to me, I would just hand individual packets of crisps out at the door as people come in and just go here are your crisp allocations for the duration of my house but that's apparently not the done thing is it no I mean, and then you get people who take too many crisps as well and i don't mind that but you get people who come in and they always have to say a phrase don't they, they always have to say a little word a little, a little invented word you know walk as thai sweet chili sensation crisp oh it's a very <laughs> Very Moorish, these, aren't they? I hate Moorish. Do I think Moorish is a word just used by fat cunts? <laughs> not physically. Jesus Christ, I'm not body shaming. I mean, like, like, physic like, a, like a mental state of mind. Like, you can mentally. I'm, I'm a fat cunt in my head, right? Because I'm. I'm Quarter past eleven last night, I got up and made a fucking sausage and onion sandwich because I'm a fat cunt. No, really, that's not like a. a, a oh, very, very more. Anything's Moorish. You don't have any self control. <laughs> Go for it. But right, anyway, you get these people and they talk to you. God, that went around the house. And you, <laughs> and they talk to you in little rhymes. I always go, hey, you know, you know what the sick call? You know, uh, you, you what? What happened there? <laughs> Somebody else heard that, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I hear voices in my head. They come to me. But I am. Um, those go um, Well, you know, Carl, you've got a. You've got to fake it until you make it. I always do a little head tilt on as if to go, the thing that I've just said rhymes, therefore I am a philosopher. You've got to fake it till you make it. <laughs> well, you know what they say, the uh, teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> they annoy me so much, I get irritated by rhymes, so I've invented one. Next time somebody rhymes to you, give them this one back. You can keep this, this is a gift, you can take away and have this one for free. Next time somebody rhymes at you, you go, oh yeah, that's right. You don't have to fake it until you make it. But you, you, you've also heard, you've only got to do it once, and then you're a nonce. <laughs> I'm really glad he's went for that. I was, in my head, I was like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if he's ever going But I, um, I, hope, I hope that's the end of, um, I think, I hope all the celebrities who should be found out have been found out, because I think it's going to break me hard if I find out that another celebrities are fucking wrong. Like, I used to be a fan of Michael Jackson until you, you know, see all the evidence. You go, oh, I can't do that anymore, can I? Otherwise you're endorsing the guy. That's when I heard about Philip Schofield, and like... <laughs> Or are you going to judge us before I say anything, yeah? That, <laughs> I know that works. I got in the car with Ant. I hadn't watched the news all day. And he said, have you heard about Philip Schofield? And in the 
celebrity climate that we live in, my first thought was, oh, fucking hell, not him as well. <laughs> but then when I found out he, he, was, he was coming out, I was like, oh, fucking hell, it's a positive story. Thank heavens for that. I want more positive stories with celebrities. Uh, and I've done the legwork as well. I have thought of the one celebrity that nobody in this room does not love, admire, respect. And if you found out that this individual was a Roman, it would crush each and every one of us up and down the UK, up, all over the world. Somebody's probably already got it in the head. Would anyone care to say that celebrity? David Attenborough. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> Could you imagine how horrible that would be if you found out that David Atten, it would kill the planet. <laughs> <laughs> you'd stop recycling in a heartbeat, wouldn't you? Hey, what are you doing on that single-use plastics, man? David Attenborough said that's going to kill up. Ah, uh, David Attenborough, well, he also said he didn't teabag all them otters, didn't he? <laughs> Dirty bastard. Dirty 90 year old bastard. Poor, poor little otters, didn't stand a chance. They were already lying on the backs, they were just asking for it. <sighs> just had to squat down, didn't he? Just... <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> We now have a prepared statement from Sir David Attenborough's attorneys. Uh, we didn't think David Attenborough was doing anything wrong. After all, none of the otters were displaying a do not disturb sign. <laughs> like, wouldn't you think as well, wouldn't you think so was a good one then? Would, wouldn't you think? People, people only ever say wouldn't you think when they've been caught out. You know, if you try and buy a drink, like on a Sunday from Asda after four o'clock. See, it's 24 hours. Yeah, but that's like Monday to Saturday. It closes at 10, then it reopens, and it's only like you know, 8 till 4. And I say, like, oh, fuck, fuck. Wouldn't you think that they'd be... Well, the money got caught. I, like, I love when you see people complain at train stations as well. Like, wouldn't you think? Do you know when you get, like, Storm, Storm Dennis, or whatever the fuck? And I didn't have to travel for that, so I was so smug. Um, and I made sure that I went on to Channel 4 News, though. Because I know that there's going to be at least five minutes dedicated. Because any time there's a storm or the snow, there's always that like five minutes of like, here's a bunch of pricks in London Paddington who can't get home, and they're all furious. And I love out like that. <laughs> like I really love it. Like, do you know when I got caught in Glasgow? I wasn't watching porn. I was just YouTubing people missing public transport. <laughs> <laughs> Having a nice time just watching all of that. But it's always the same guy. I don't know, he's fucking posh. Oh, this whole country's a joke. This whole system's a joke. I pay for my for, for my season ticket and I I for what I I hi I hi hi hi. I remember posh people are kicking off, it always sounds like they're about to sneeze. And hi, 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 it's a joke, this whole fucking thing's a joke. I'm just sat there. I'll be so ah, that's what you get for wearing a scarf, you prick. <laughs> love it, man. Absolutely love it. I think I just don't like people who travel. I think that's the problem, you know. I don't like people who travel, because I have to travel for a living. So I think that's, I view everybody else who travels as just like getting in my way. You know, I, not people who go on holiday. I love people who go on holiday, go on holiday as many times as you like. It's people who go traveling, you know, backpacking, flip flops, not washing. Stink. Be it. Playing the guitar. Probably called Seth. There he is. Type of one guess. I lost a mate to travel. It's people go travelling and then come back and act as if they've discovered the place they fucking travel to. Where have you been to? Oh, it's this uh, place called Australia. Yeah, uh... I, when I say I lost a mate travelling, I didn't. He didn't die. He just came back a twat. <laughs> Horrible. Travel broadens the mind, doesn't it? Just come back and toss it. That's what happens. You think you're better than everyone now because you've had your dad's money. That's all That's all there. When, when you're sushi, trying to have a nice time, uh, Blue Monday, if I'm going for it as well. And he's, he's, he ate. Yeah, and this is what he said, right? When, oh, oh. oh, it's not as good as the sushi you get in Japan. <laughs> well, I could have told you that. <laughs> I haven't been to Japan. Do you want to know why? Because it's not Japan. It's Newcastle, your sushi. And why are you slagging it off as well? This is the best sushi I've ever had. Because the only sushi I've had before this 
was the one pound Tesco pack <laughs> I used to get on my lunch break when I hated my life. So this is an upgrade for me. So you saying that makes me feel like shit. That, and you don't even know that. It's the obliviousness of some people. Uh, people with money, some people who are just born with it, that's so oblivious. It's not their fault, because, you know, not, not known. But the same thing sometimes with, they'll go, this, this is how you know people have got money. They'll go, oh, you've never been. Well, you've never been to uh, Bermuda. Have you? You've never been to the Maldives. Oh, you should go. <laughs> you should go. Now, oh, I should, shall I? That's what I've been doing wrong. <laughs> I've been not going. <laughs> I've been not going like a daft ass said, yeah. I had that spare 10 grand as well, didn't I? And a year off work, I should have went, shouldn't I? <laughs> Do you know what I was at uni? I was the only one in the house who had a job. And they would actually say, well, why are you going to work? Like, what fucking planet do you live on? I didn't, like, I don't, I'm not trying to fucking sound like a Bruce Springsteen or anything, Jesus Christ. But you know, I had a job since I was 18. Well, my first job, uh, when I turned 18, it was, a, it was a janitor job in a factory. So it was like my job like, was just to clean seven factory toilets from a night shift, right? They're going in at seven in the morning. Yeah, I'm glad. I said night shift, and some people went, ah, oh. Because it's, you know what I mean? It's a different caliber. It's like a monkey type old. There was no way, not one of the fucking 40 employees were having their shites in the house. I'll tell you that now. But were saving up so they could get paid while at work to have monkey fucking, what I can only describe as art exhibits. <laughs> Some of the track marks, honestly, tracks of my tears. So I was, so I was going in. And I remember I just, I wanted to get it over quickly. So I had this big old toilet brush. I, just, I was like over vigorous like that. So I just went in and I went in too much. And there's a bit of wet shit. And I just, just fell down my cheek. It's like a little brown tear. I remember looking at myself in the mouth. I thought, I should go to Japan. <laughs> lists as well, man. It's like, oh, you've, well, you don't have a list of things you want to do before you die. No, it sounds fucking awful. I panic at a shopping list. I don't want a, I don't want a life flu. Oh, oh, you, oh, Carl, you've never lived. You've never lived until you've seen the Grand Canyon. You've never lived until you've seen Niagara Falls. And hey, don't talk to me about not living. You ever got a free pint for having a wank? <laughs> I am living my best life. <laughs> dying wishes as well. I've always thought they were a bit weird. Why do you have a dying wish? You're not going to be around to follow it up. Don't have it. If I was to have one, I would just take the piss with me mate. You know what can I do for you, Carl? Come here. Come here. Anything, Carl. Yeah. Just three seconds before that. He just... Can you finish that loft conversion for us? <laughs> Yeah, it'll take ages, but get estimates. Thank you. It's me dying wish, please. I think people get, you know, getting back to the guy that at the front, you know, in Liverpool, retiring from life. Well, he's got the right attitude, and he's just, he's just fucking doing that. Doesn't matter when I die, I'm just getting the most out of it. I think, too, I think we think too much about it. That whole opt in, opt out with organ donors. I'm so glad that everyone has just automatically opted in now. I think that's, that's been like waiting to happen for far too long. And, and I don't think anyone's a bad person for not doing it. I just think when it was the old fashioned way of opting out and you had to opt in, I think the thing that was putting most people off was just fucking filling in the form, wasn't it? It was just, it was just admin, wasn't it? Nobody wants, somebody can knock on your door, right? Do you want to buy some sandpaper? Last time. Someone could, <laughs> someone could knock on your door and just go, hey, I've got a cure for cancer, do you want it? Oh yeah, man, that, that would be, that would come in very handy. Thank you very much, yeah. Right, fill in this form and I'll need your mother's mate, oh mate, fucking keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it. <laughs> Don't want it. And then, I think everything that we know now about the environment, I think that, um, I think everyone should get cremated as well. I know some people want to be buried, so oh, no, I want to, I want to be buried. I just think for, you know, we know that the planet's got limited resources now, so it would probably be a bit less selfish if we didn't take up fucking six foot of land for everyone that's ever lived. I think that's a good starting point.
isn't it? Just, like, and some people, oh no, I, I, want, I want something to be remembered by, I want to be buried. I, but look, if you want to bury something so badly, chances are if you die and you haven't taken the bins out for a couple of weeks, fucking put that in a coffin, bury that. That would, that would be my dying wish, actually, big coffin, full of rubbish, and I'd just make eight of my top enemies that I've acquired throughout my lifetime, I'd make them all pole bearers. That would be my dying wish. Just imagine them all just fucking like that. <laughs> so how did you get roped into this? Uh, well, I used to teach his kids and we had it out at parents' night one time. The guy over here just like, ah, well, I, I used to park in front of his house without asking. And there's a guy just way down here, just, what happened to you? Just, well, he tried to pick up a parcel once, but he didn't have any idea. <laughs> Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen of Chorley. This has been absolutely awesome. I've loved every minute of this. Thank you so much for coming back. Man, 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 man. I, uh, can we have another massive round of applause for Anthony Young, please, everyone? Anthony Young. And, um, as always, I just, and, and, all the staff and all the volunteers who uh, keep this place open to make sure that um, I can come and earn a living here and you can all come and uh, have a night out. So thank you very, very much to everyone at Tony and for having us back there. Um, um, thank you to each and every uh, one of you guys. Um, I say this all the time, but it, I, don't, I don't not mean it um, just because I say it all the time, but if you didn't come, um, I wouldn't have a job. And it's as simple as that. Um, it would be very weird. It would just be me in an empty theatre. <laughs> it would be shit. Um, so thank you. Thank you very much for letting me be an adult without ever having to have a real job. If you're taking a photo, I can pose for it, you know, it's fine. <laughs> Good? Fantastic. That's right. You don't have to be sneaky about it, it's fine. Um, yeah, if you didn't come, I wouldn't have a job. So, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you very, very much indeed. And I'll definitely be back soon. And, um, ah, bless you. Um, I'm not going to leave it on that sentimental note. I, uh, I want to tell you how much of a twat I've been recently. Um, in case you couldn't get that from the other, fucking hell, 85 minutes. Jesus, that was fun. Um, now what happened was, um, I was, the public transport system, basically I troll people on Twitter now. Right? I've just seen that Joe Lyson has changed his name to Hugo Boss. I think that's fucking fantastic. Like, do you know I mean? If I had his profile, I'd, I'd do the exact same thing. I'd, I'd fucking, but I, I'm on a much lower profile, so I fucking, um, I've got to troll people locally. So the public transport system in Newcastle's not great. It's, it's, it's a metro, right? It's like it's a little, um, not just a metro, just a little um, public train system. And I was done. It, do you know how shit it is? They've had to invent a cartoon character called Metro Ken just to, to give you bad news. So he comes up on the screen every time your train's delayed. It's like, hey, Metro Ken's here. You're not going to get home when you want to. Fuck you. <laughs> horrible. Absolutely horrible. And um, I was done at two in the afternoon, but I bought a day saver. Now, if you've done it two, you know, you, you don't throw it away. You just, what would you do? Give it to someone else so someone else can enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? Now, I did that, and then one of the ticket inspectors saw us got the ticket and ripped it up. Thank you. So I said, oh God. So I went, why did you do that? Again, oh, policy. <laughs> not transferable. Oh, well, I'm not having that. So I'm gonna fucking take it to Twitter. So I said, just left an all zone day pass at Regent Center and one of your goons waited. <laughs> uh, I was quite happy with that word. Waited till I left to take it and rip it up. Heaven forbid a bit of goodwill should be passed around while people are experiencing delays. And I got a reply that said, Hi Carl, Metro tickets are not transferable. The member of staff has carried out the correct procedure. <laughs> Fuck that. I said, Computer says no. <laughs> it's just a nice thing to do. Why is it your policy not to do the nice thing? What, you think the person who receives it will now only travel if it's free? You just, you make the world a sadder place. And I should have took the high road there. But I don't know the high road, ladies and gentlemen. I only know the low road. The low, down, and dirty road. If I had just done that, that would have been fine. But I said, Dave, just pay it forward. You make the world a sadder place. <sighs> Metro Ken is a pedo. <laughs> <laughs> it 
If I could do it all again, I wouldn't involve Matt Rookin. He didn't do a damn thing to me. He didn't deserve that on that day. Anyway, other people start leaving their tickets all over the place, so now I'm setting the trend. They said, hey, to this guy, can you please take it down because it's your assistant is much appreciated anti-social behavior. And I just said, hey, you just stick to removing those trains and delaying people. Yeah. <laughs> Sticking it to the man. And then I thought I'll do one in the form of an announcement. So I, at present, the ticket remains by the machines. I will update you as soon as we hear anything. How do you like it? <laughs> and rest assured, Charlie, if you antagonize Metro long enough on Twitter, it inevitably will lead to getting fucked. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been absolutely awesome. I've loved every minute of it. I hope you have too. Thank you very, very much. I'll see you all again sometime. Good night!